Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, our chapter. It's called, well, part of it's called lead coefficients, and we need to figure out what is a lead coefficient. We'll do that in just a second. Um, let's review an old problem. Go ahead and copy this down and solve it. And you can pause this, of course, while you complete the square, and I'll do that as soon as you've paused it and looked at it yourself. So, okay, here we go. Uh, we know we need to, let's rewrite this, x squared plus 3x minus 5, and I'll leave some space there, equals 0, all right? We know we need to figure out what this number should be according to what this number is right here. We know the method of doing this is simply taking that number and cutting it in two and then squaring it. So that's going to be 9 <coughs> excuse me, over 4. 9 over 4, all right? Well, this is not 9 over 4, obviously. Okay, it's negative 5. Let's go ahead and rewrite this negative 5 as if it, you know, if it has a, a 4 in the denominator. So what we do there is we multiply by 4, and that's going to be negative 20 over 4. Okay? Now, the question is, how do we move from negative 20 fourths to positive 9 fourths? In other words, on a number line, we need to move from negative 20 to positive 9. What do we need to add? We need to add 29 over 4. And then, of course, we do the same thing on the right side. There we go. Let's go ahead and nice and neatly write this here. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths equals 29 fourths. All right? <clears throat> okay, well, let's go ahead and rewrite this as a squared part of an equation here. We know that's x. And this is easy. What we add here is always going to be either half of this number here, which is 3 divided by 2, or a, the square root of 9 over 4, which is, of course, also 3 over 2. All right, that equals 29 over fourths. Over 4, excuse me. Um, this is an easy equation to solve if you saw this in your book because you would know exactly what to do. All you've done so far is just create this. All right, we take the square root, which means we have x plus 3 halves. Taking the square root of this side means, don't forget, you're going to have your plus and minus, the square root of 29 and over the square root of 4, which is 2. And the last step we need to do is just move that 3 halves over. So we have negative 3. I'll just go ahead and put both of these numbers in the numerator. Plus or minus the square root of 29. And it's all over 2. And there you go. And there's your answer. Okay. That is with what's called, well, we'll talk about the coefficients here. The lead coefficient of the equation we just did, look at the one we just did. That's it. The lead coefficient is defined as the number of x squares. And of course, this case is just one. In fact, those are the only lead coefficients we've done so far in Algebra 2, is messing with quadratic equations which have a lead coefficient of one. That's how we've completed the square. We are now, however, going to do this kind of completing the square with a lead coefficient of something other than one. And it's real simple what you need to do. Uh, you could probably figure it out yourself. What, what do we need to do to that 4x squared to turn it into a 1x squared? Just divide by 4, right? And of course, you know if you do something to something in an equation, you've got to do it to everything, right? Or you've got to do every, all the way across, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. Go ahead and copy down this equation. If you need to pause it, go ahead. And let's complete the square. And the only extra step we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by 4. And you can do it individually if you want to. This will be divided by 4. That will be divided by 4. This will be divided by 4. And that will be divided by 4. Okay? So 4x squared divided by 4, of course, the whole point is to get it to the point where it's 1x squared. So that, we know that's what we're going to get. All right? Plus 3 fourths x minus 3 fourths. And I'll leave some room here because I'm going to add something. All right, equals 0. Okay. Well, our job now is to figure out what this number needs to be. Just like always, okay? And again, the way we do it is we take half of this and we square it. Now, if you don't <clears throat> right away see that half of 3 fourths is 3 eighths, no, you can just go, what's half of 3 fourths of a pi? Mm -hmm. 3 eighths of a pi. Uh, you can just go ahead and just go 3 fourths times 1 half, and that'll give you 3 eighths. But we need to square that thing, which is going to give us 9 over 64. That's the number we need right here, and that ain't what it is, all right? So we need to turn this fraction, negative 3 fourths, into something with a denominator of 64, okay? Well, if you 
just do the division. You, you, if you need to, you can use a calculator to speed it up for yourself. But four times what gives you 64? The answer is 16. 16. Okay. So what we'll have here is we're going to have a 64 at the bottom. Then at the top, we're going to have three times 16, which is 48. Okay. So our question is, how do we move from negative 48 64 all the way over to positive 9 64 And then this is like a number line. How do you go from negative 48 to 9? Well, you go 48 first to get to 0, right? Then you get to, you add 9. So 48 plus 9 will be 57 over 64. And then you go, okay, same thing over here. And let's rewrite this nice and neat here so it's not all gloppy looking here. So x squared plus 3 fourths x. And then we're going to write plus 9 60 fourths equals 57 60 fourths. All right. We know what to do now. And again, the way we know what number goes here is either you take, you know, half of this, which is 3 eighths, or you can take the square root of this, which is, of course, also square root of 9, 3. The square root of 64, 8. Okay? That equals 57 60 fourths. And you know how to solve these equations. Okay? Just take the square root. So let's do that in one step. x plus 3 eighths is taking that square root. The other one is, of course, don't forget, we always do plus or minus. The square root of 57 over the square root of 64, which is 8. And only one more step is you move this over. So x is equal to negative 3. And I'll just put you know, all this over one denominator since it's the same denominator. And there we go. And we got it. And that's how you complete a square with a lead coefficient other than 1. All you need to do is just divide by whatever this number is, like we did, and just one extra step, you got it, okay? All right, let's try another one. Try another one. All right, copy this down. Pause if you need to. I'm going to make this really exciting with a different color. If you need to pause it and calm down a little bit, you can, okay? All right, let's do it together. Divide by 5. All the way across, we're going to have x squared. We're going to have, and if you just, that's a 1 there. So, oops, that's not a plus. What did I do that for? Like that. Not too bad. Okay, here we go. x minus 1 fifth x minus 2 divided by 5 also, and then equals, you know, oops, let me add some space there. I forgot we need that. There we go. And that 5 is kind of in my way. We know we're dividing by 5. All right, so a little space there equals 0 divided by 5, which is just 0. <coughs> okay, this is not the number that we want. we got to use this to figure out what we want there. Okay, so what we do is we take half of that. What's half of negative 1 over 5? That's negative 1 over 10. And if you ever forget, you can just take, you know, Negative one fifth and then times one half. I'll do the same thing. Okay, this needs to be squared, so that's positive one over 100. That's what we want here. This positive one over 100 total. Well, that's not what we got. So we're gonna have to take this negative two fifths and turn it into a fraction with 100 as a denominator. Well, you tell me. What does five need to be uh, multiplied by to give you 100? 20, right? So we'll do it that. We'll do the two also multiplied by. 20. Okay, so that'll give us negative 40 over 100, but we don't want that. We want a positive 1 over 100. So moving from negative 40 over 100 to positive 1 over 100, well, we're going to have to add 41 over 100. And over here, of course, we do exactly the same thing. Okay, let's neaten this up. x squared minus a fifth x, and that'll be plus 1 100 equals 41 over 100. Okay. And let's go ahead and write this as a, a term with a squared outside it. So we're going to have x minus 1 tenth squared equals 41 over 100. Don't forget, this number here is always either half of this or the square root of that. Okay, take the square root. We got it. x minus uh, 1 over 10 equals plus or minus the square root of 41 over the square root of 100, which is also 10, okay? And we're going to mash that over here. So the last step is x equals 1 <coughs> plus or minus the square root of 41 
over 10. Okay, and there you go. All right. Good enough? Okay, let's try the practice set. Solve A. See what you get. Pause it and see how you do. All right. Well, we know we're going to take that and uh, divide by 3 all the way across there. So let's write our new equation. That'll be x squared plus 5 thirds x minus 6 divided by 3 is 2. I'll leave some space and I'll write a 0 because 0 divided by 3 is 0. Okay. This, we do not want to put negative 2. We've got to figure out what we need. So we take half of this. Well, half of 5 over 3 is 5 over 6. We've got to square it. So we end up with 25 over 36. That ain't 25 over 36. Okay, that's negative 2. We'll call it over 1. Okay. Well, we've got to figure out what's going to give us uh, a, you know, a number with negative 2 with 36 as our denominator. Well, of course, the answer is 18. So negative 2 over, well, actually, excuse me, you multiply by 36. So that'll be 1 times 36 is 36, of course, and then 2 times 36 is 72. All right, now let's think for a second. We are at negative 72 over 36. We need to get to positive 25 over 36. So we're going to have to add 72 to get to 0, then add 25 more to get to 25, which gives us 97 total. And of course, we're going to add 97 over 36 here. All right, let's neaten up x squared plus 5 thirds x plus 25 over 36 equals 97 over 36. Okay, and let's go ahead and write this as a nice uh, little bunch of stuff inside of, in a parentheses here with a squared, and that's my plus, and we know, of course, it's going to be just 5 sixths, and that'll be 97 over 36, okay? All right, well, we take the square root of both sides, x plus 5 over 6 equals the square root of 97 over, the square root of 36 is 6, and don't forget your plus or minus. And the last thing we need to do is just move the uh, negative 5 over, so we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 97 all over 6. You can learn how to do it this way or just look at the equations, take a bunch of wild guesses and see if you just, let's see, is the answer 7? No. Negative 5? No. 18? No. Negative 2 thirds? No. Um, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 97 over 6? Yeah, that was it. It works. Or you can just pull your teeth out with pliers. That'd be more fun. All right, try B. Pause it and give B a whirl. See what you get. All right, we're going to divide by 3. So we have a new equation. x squared minus, and I'll just put a 1 there to remind us, it's going to be 1 over 3x minus 1 over 3. Equal, oops, I'm going to hold off. I always forget to put that extra space there. Okay, uh, extra space, then zero, and then we'll see what we add. Okay, so what do we want for this number? And it's not one, negative one-third, obviously. Okay, we need to be taking one negative one-third and going half of that. Okay, that's going to be negative one-sixth. Then squaring it, and that'll be one over 36. We, that's what we want this to be. Well, we're not at that, of course. We're at negative one-third. So let's change this into something that has a 36 as a denominator. Well, 3 times 12 is 36, so there's a 36, and 1 times 12, boom, there you go. Moving from negative 12, 36, all the way over to 1, 36, we'll have to do that 13 times, and we'll just add that to the right side as well. And let's kind of neaten this up. X, oops, we just did a plus, and it should be a minus. There we go, okay. So that'll be X squared minus a third X, and that will be plus 1 over 36 equals 13 over 36. All right. And let's rewrite. And that will be x and a minus there. And then 
you know, that would be 1 sixth, we know that, equals 13 over 36, okay? All right, take the square root. x minus a sixth equals plus or minus the square root of 13 over the square root of 36, which is 6, and we mash this stuff on over, and we have a positive 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 6, and there you go, okay? All right, work on those and see how they go today. See you all next time.